Welcome back, friends, to day two of Keyshot World 2020. This is our second session today. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us. We've gotten tremendous feedback from everyone uh, online about how much they're enjoying this. So we're going to keep the fun going here uh, today. Um, as much as our second session, uh, this is design and innovation um, uh, at Pepsi utilizing Keyshot with Jacob Fine. So I want to really thank Jacob for coming out today. Uh, in case you missed it, our earlier session today was Keyshot Essentials UI and Workflow with Ryan Levy. Uh, as always, all of the sessions are going right to YouTube Live, so you can enjoy them um, you know, as they're going on or any time during the day. And if you go to our full agenda site, you'll see uh, basically all the, the sessions that are upcoming uh, and watch the past ones. So definitely uh, follow along there. Um, as I mentioned earlier today, um, if you're working from home and you need assistance with your Keyshot license and you need to get the Keyshot license up at home, please contact your, uh, your sales uh, representative. Um, if you don't know who that is, you can go to sales at luxion.com. Um, a big thank you again for Jacob coming out today. He's gonna really talk about how he uses uh, Keyshot uh, in his uh, workflow, uh, along with Georgia Larte's presentation yesterday from Spin Master, who talked about as well. And it's really been great to sort of see, you know, as part of this whole presentation, we're, we're going to show you how you, how to use Keyshop, but also it's great to sort of see how people are using their workflow uh, across the entire design process from initial concept art all the way to, to final marketing imagery. Um, you know, it's been really inspiring and motivating to, to, to see what these folks can do uh, with Keyshot. So, so please uh, come back and join us every day uh, until April 2nd, every business day that is, uh, and learn more. Um, as I mentioned, this is the second session of the day, and that means it's giveaway time. So the fine folks at Three Off The Page has, have offered us uh, one week, 64 core rental to give away. You heard me correctly, one week, 64 cores from the wonderful folks at Three Off The Page, the premier Keyshot rendering solution. Uh, so you have to hang around for the whole presentation, the q and I know you will, uh, and then we'll be giving that out. Um, so thank you to them. Reminder, follow us on social media, hashtag Keyshot World. Um, you know, follow us on Twitter, uh, get that newsletter. We really want to kind of get everyone excited. Talk about us in the forum, uh, questions, anything you, 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 um, you want to know about. Um, along those same lines, um, some of the folks are, are having kind of questions that come in about, hey, you know, in Ryan's session, I want to know more about lighting. Take a look at that agenda and see, you know, what, what's being talked about in the future. If you want to learn about KVR, you want to uh, learn about lighting, uh, all those agendas are going to be out there. So please uh, take a look and enjoy. Um, but with that said, I think it's time to kick it over to Mr. Uh, Jacob Fine uh, to do design innovation at Pepsi utilizing Keyshot. So Jacob, take it away. Hello, 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 hello. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. So let me get that up and running. So hello, um, my name is Jacob Fine. And uh, like Derek said, uh, my presentation really is focused around how I use Keyshot in my day to day at PepsiCo. And when I say that, you know, it means a wide range of ways that I use it from, you know, sketches to that final image. Um, and before I start, I just want to say, you know, if you hear any background noise or something, I am quarantined in New York City right now. So hello from Brooklyn. Um, I'm currently uh, presenting in my living room and my roommate is downstairs watching this right now. So hi, Michael. Um, we are basically a little agency from home right now. But uh, I really wanted to go and talk a little bit about, you know, what I do at PepsiCo, but also the broader team that works at PepsiCo. And, you know, we have a internal design capability at um, PepsiCo in New York City. And that team is separated across basically six different categories. And, you know, I'm going to showcase a little bit about how I use Keyshot, but I also wanted to take the upfront to show you how our team also uses Keyshot at PepsiCo because, you know, everyone uses this program in a different way. So just to give a little bit of an overview on how we're structured, um, our team is separated, like I said, into six different categories. So 
the beverage teams. Uh, those people primarily work on all of the beverages across uh, our global properties as well as our North America properties. Um, and most of these categories are split into those different subsets because obviously PepsiCo is a global company and you know, under the PepsiCo umbrella, there are brands that I'm sure that you've never thought that PepsiCo actually um, owns and operates. But, you know, as one of those large CPG companies, uh, a lot of people work on a lot of different brands. So um, we have the beverage team. Uh, we also have snacks team. So Frito-Lay is, is a part of PepsiCo. And uh, we have snacks teams that work on graphic design packaging across the entire globe. We also have a classic industrial design team. So, you know, I majored in industrial design and um, originally thought I was going to come to PepsiCo for that. Uh, but as you'll see in the presentation, I've moved around a lot through my um, time at PepsiCo. But we do have a classic industrial design team that uses KeyShot a lot of how I used KeyShot when I was in college. Uh, we have the brand experience team. So, this is a, a smaller team, but works on activations and events across all of the different brands um, globally and uh, regionally in North America. Uh, this is actually the team that I started on uh, working at PepsiCo. Uh, and that's a photo of one of the activations that I'll show you a little bit later in the presentation. But um, that's a really fun team that you would not think exists at a uh, soda and snack company. Uh, there is also the customer experience team. So uh, that team is primarily focused on uh, our customer relationships and uh, food service partners. Um, so imagine seeing uh, a fountain cup at a Regal, our recently announced uh, food service partner. Um, every, all of that is designed uh, by the team here. And then there is the innovation team and they're doing innovation from one year out to 10 years out. And, you know, they really are focused on what is going to be that next breakthrough innovation that will change the face of the company. So, like I said, um, I wanted to start out by showing a little bit of, you know, our team's work that, that is not me. So, um, you know, bear in mind, I don't have as much background knowledge on, on how these things were done, but, I am impressed every day when I look around the office and see what people are doing. Um, it's incredible work. And a lot of them are actually better at KeyShot than I am. Uh, so I wanted to give them a shout out. So, you know, just to start, our industrial design team, they work on everything from structural packaging design to equipment. Um, and Christian from that team uh, worked on this fountain. And I think it's an incredible example of how photo real you can get with KeyShot. Um, you know, the ability to use labels and map the textures. And I, I, I just loved this as an example of some more of that quintessential industrial design element that we do at PepsiCo. Um, Klaus, also on the industrial design team, uh, has worked on just every time I go to his desk, he's working on something new. Um, this solar powered cart was super impressive to me. Just the level of kind of detail in the way he expressed the labels and how he went into each individual bag. And a lot of times at PepsiCo, you don't have the time to do this. Um, but when you do, I think it, it's incredible the way that this can be used to create uh, key visuals and marketing materials that can be used in press releases or even to show brand teams um, how your vision as a designer can come to life. Uh, Klaus also, obviously on the industrial design team, has done fountain designs. And, and this is one of our um, Spire fountains. Uh, super interesting, again, how it can kind of bridge the gap between so many different designs. Um, John Marish, who actually, I went through all the participants and I think I saw him on the list and I think he's watching. Um, I went over to him the other day because I know he's been improving vastly in KeyShot over the past years. Um, he's our expert photo retoucher. And I think how he's been utilizing uh, KeyShot to 
kind of not only give him a base to to photo retouch over, but also doing things that he might not need a photo shoot to do. Um, super, super inspirational. And I think that these are really cool examples of the way he's been using condensation on, on some things. Um, our customer experience team, uh, John Traub uh, rendered this. I think this is a great example of the kind of other end of the spectrum of a much larger activation um, and space and also utilizing uh, tune shading and rendering. I feel like a lot of times when we're in key shot, our gut instinct is to immediately try and make something photo real. And throughout the whole presentation, I'm gonna kind of go through, um, you know, the ways that I come to think about how I execute what I wanna do in Keyshot and whether I feel like Keyshot needs to be the end goal or um, if it's just a part in the, in the work stream of how I use it. So I think that this is a great example of how um, John used tune shading to really make this feel like a sketch. Um, uh, also through this activation, you know, when we're doing larger scale renderings, there's so many different components that Keyshot really helps with that workflow of, you know, figuring out, okay, do we take a photo on site of the real activation because we need to add benches and using a backplate, we can render in and figure out the scale and if that design fits in, uh, referencing the bottom right image or on the, or on the left, the bottom left image, really figuring out, okay, how do we begin to help with, you know, behind the counter? How do we make that more seamless for the workers? Um, all of this, I feel like Keyshot really helps within our workflow. But, you know, a little bit more about me because uh, I can't just talk about everyone else's designs. Um, I am a SCAD grad, so I mentioned a little bit about how I use Keyshot in college. I saw a couple of my professors in the participants, so wanted to say hi to John and Owen. Um, you know, everyone who's been reaching out to me, I've, I've just been kind of floored. And I think it's a testament to Keyshot's marketing because... You know, I didn't tell a lot of people about this, but I thought it was super impressive how many people texted me out of the blue. Um, I have been at PepsiCo for five years. So I mentioned that the um, there were that many different departments. And currently I am in PepsiCo Beverages North America. But I originally started in experiential design. So I was doing events, I started globally, I moved to um, the regional design, so working in North America. Um, then, now I'm actually a um, associate brand manager on PBNA, which is PepsiCo Beverages North America. And I am working specifically on um, our energy portfolio. So a lot more brand design and packaging design than I had ever done in the past. And then one last thing, I love Keyshot. So I have been a Keyshot fanboy since the inception of time. Uh, I went onto my Facebook and I actually found this from 2010, which I think is the year that Keyshot launched um, after Hypershot. And this, I think, was my first rendering, which was the Hammer Tutorial from Rhino. And I remember going into this, and you can see my very rudimentary texture mapping on the bottom left with the wooden block and this toy hammer. But, you know, I've been enamored on using Keyshot for 10 years. And I think that, you know, every single iteration of Keyshot now in Keyshot 9, um, these new features have opened doors to doing new things and new ways of thinking and going about things in very different ways. So um, as a little framework for what I'm about to go through, I kind of separated how I work in Keyshot into four buckets. So I use Keyshot, like I had mentioned, in that wide gamut of execution. So there's ideation, uh, which I kind of consider using Keyshot as my accelerator when I only have, you know, five minutes to do something and I don't feel like rendering the full thing. Or if I need to use Keyshot for something that I'm too lazy to do by hand, I feel like Keyshot is that 
kind of jumping pad to to getting me to an end result that looks incredible with a very minimum amount of work. Then I separated out experiential. So like Ed mentioned, I started on the experience design team. So Keyshot really helped me utilize rendering on a scale that I'd never done before um, at SCAD. And that was with these larger event spaces. Uh, there's marketing and that to me is, is using Keyshot where there might be budgets, budget restrictions, where we don't have photo shoots. Um, there's some fun stories within that section that I won't spoil, but you know, using Keyshot to make those beautiful images that uh, it can do so well. And then there's uh, rendering 101. So when I consider that, um, that's a really new facet that I've started to look at at PepsiCo. And that's using Keyshot. Uh, and it's a very user-friendly interface to kind of democratize rendering across our office. So, um, you know, there are some really amazing experts in our office that use Keyshot currently that I had shown you in the upfront of this deck. Uh, but there are also people that have literally never used Keyshot or CAD a day in their life. And when they come up and see you rendering, um, they ask like, oh, can I do that? How do I do that? And you know, I've, over the past uh, couple of months, tried to figure out ways to help them start to use Keyshot. So I'll go over a little bit of that. But let's start at ideation. So uh, I'm gonna take you through a bunch of images in the next parts of the deck, and I'm gonna try and describe how I use Keychat in those specific situations. And definitely feel free to, to save any questions for the end of the session, and I'll try and answer them as um, much as I can uh, to see if uh, there's anything that I can clarify, but let's jump right in. So this page is a page of LifeWater elements. Uh, Life Water is a, a beverage that we launched, I believe, a couple of years ago uh, that is all about artists and emerging artists and, and kind of incorporating them on the label. And when we were designing these um, experiential elements, so how does this brand come to life in three dimensions past the bottle? Um, I had to sketch a ton of elements and you know go through rounds and rounds of reviews internally to figure out like what are how does this brand start to express itself in three dimensions and in a lot of cases i used keyshot to kind of cheat my way into photorealistic sketches so i think the top right image is a perfect example um instead of you know, going into Photoshop and making literally a single flat paneled wall. Keyshot allowed me to make this wall really, really quick, render it up, it had the shadows, it had the perspective perfectly, and it, and it allowed me the perfect base to take the graphic that one of my graphic design teammates had worked on and start to Photoshop this kind of interactive mural experience uh, into life. Now, could I have done that in Photoshop? Of course but Keyshot allowed me to get that kind of perfect angle and really jump-started my kind of creativity in terms of, you know, not being bogged down in kind of how you would create a normal sketch. I think the bottom left is another perfect example of that. I had this idea for this uh, kind of like 180 GIF style photo shoot backdrop and I had my CAD model and you know, instead of what I had done in the past at jobs that didn't have Keyshot, I would have taken a screenshot of the model and Photoshopped over it. I was really able to start and explore the materializations of how this came to life. Um, so I feel like this is a very underutilized aspect of Keyshot when I, when I, you know, look online to how people are using the program. I feel like you should not limit yourself to only doing a final photorealistic renders. Really think about how the program can accelerate and create things faster and more seamlessly in your workflow. So again, this is a, a life water experiential element that I have rendered in Keyshot. Um, and it kind of was allowed me to work with art 
And through these kind of changing series, I created a Photoshop template based on this rendering. So I could just replace all the artwork depending on the time of year. So, you know, really thinking of ways to use renderings as a base as well is um, a really fun way, I think, to, to use your renderings past that final image. This is uh, a project that we just recently finished. So um, we work on NBA All-Stars and I also work on Mountain Dew a lot. Um, and we work on influencer kits. So just to take a step back and kind of describe what, what we consider an influencer kit, uh, through brand marketing and strategy, we identify influencers, whether it be NBA athletes, uh, celebrities, et cetera, that we create custom kits for, for PR and marketing. And, you know, traditionally this was something that, uh, the PR teams would outsource, uh, to an agency to kind of design and execute, uh, with the help of Keyshot, we've taken a lot of that internal now. And I think it's an, I think one of the best aspects of Keyshot is using the materials within the program to really accelerate the kind of decision making and materialization that's needed uh, when working with a cross functional uh, marketing team. So when we're working at PepsiCo, we work on cross functional teams that you know, incorporate PR, we have a design function, we have a marketing function, we have a commercialization function. Um, and all of those people need to align to get the design out the door. And, you know, I'm sure we've all run into the situation where our marketing partners are not as visually inclined and don't have that ability to see what's in your head. And I think that this is a great example uh, of how we can get to that alignment a lot quicker. So a little story on the left. This is a resin basketball that we uh, cast that had custom 3D printed cans inside encased in the resin. And originally we had the idea, okay, we're gonna actually cut a basketball. Uh, it's gonna be the classic orange and black stripes. And you know, in my brain, I'm thinking, that's not gonna look good. Like, I do not like that that materialization and so initially in the meeting i had said why don't we make the resin like neon green uh, with the black stripes to make it feel more modern no one got the vision um but i was really able to jump right in and pop out an image in i think like 30 minutes that was like i download the basketball model i cut it in rhino i put the cans that we already had in there and immediately we were aligned and moving forward to production on this, on this idea. And again, like, I feel like a lot of uh, people will stop at, you know, trying to make everything perfect. And a lot of times my renderings are a combination of Photoshop on top of a kind of rudimentary rendering in Keyshot. And for example, you can see if you look really closely, the left lines uh, on the basketball, I just filled in in Photoshop because when I cut the ball into that medallion, it uh, the lines didn't kind of completely move to that center section. Now, if I had really spent the time to model that, I probably could have figured it out. But wasting that kind of time during my, you know, work, my work week is, a luxury and in a lot of cases I'm really trying to accelerate to get an image out the door so I can move on to the next the next project that I'm working on so I that's kind of another thing that I feel like everyone should internalize is you know don't be a perfectionist unless you have to be um, because I think Keyshot can do a lot of things that are really quick and dirty that will help you accelerate to the next step instead of really spending all of that time noodling. So now I, I kind of want to move on to experiential design, which is has a really fond place in my heart, which is where I started at PepsiCo. And I want to start with Tostitos Cantina. So I worked on a Super Bowl activation uh, for Tostitos. And it was really the first time I had taken a full brand activation and rendered it 
in kind of a photorealistic way in an outdoor environment um, using Keyshot. And I, I was super happy with the result. And on the next page, I'll show you the kind of end result in production on how this came to life. But I feel like Keyshot really opens doors uh, in event design to get your vision across. When you're working with an agency on an event like this, uh, we are working with them to build out the experience. A lot of times details get lost in the shuffle. This is a huge footprint. And before we took control of rendering and designing the spaces, uh, a lot of times we would, we would align on something with an agency, get on site and, and be surprised at how it came to life in a way that we didn't really like. With Keyshot, we were really a, kind of allowed us to material, materialize all of these different components in a way that was so brick to forehead that we got very accurate representations in real life. Um, so to talk a little bit about the, the way that I did this in Keyshot, uh, I'm, I had this model in SketchUp. I worked with uh, a team member to kind of help me model this. We took different components of it and then kind of put it together in SketchUp. And then when I brought it into Keyshot, this was, I believe, the first year that um, that interior rendering came out. Uh, and that was kind of when I was really focused on figuring out how to make more realistic lighting on these larger scale activations. And for this one, I actually used an outdoor uh, HDR, HDRI. And I think it was the first time that I really understood what the sunlight um, and those sunlight HDRI environments really helped with. Because a lot of times when you use it on products, you're like, oh my God, the light is so intense. Uh, but here it really gave some realistic shadows and knowing that this was in a parking lot and showing this to marketing teams in this environment um, at the Super Bowl in the kind of lot that it would be in existence at really helped get this uh, pushed through. So um, as you can see on this page, it came to life almost identical to the rendering, which it really was an incredible achievement. Um, so many people were there. It really allowed us to get an elevated Tostitos um, experience to consumers. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, Keyshot has helped us push the boundaries on our brand past uh, logo slapping, which I feel like a lot of brands, um, you know, can tend to fall into that hole where you just put the logo in a bunch of places. So, you know, looking at how we, these tires with these painted tires came to life for this kind of Southwest vibe, um, that was really inspired by using a, an occlusion map in Keisha on a tire model to kind of play with that two-toned uh, tire look and feel. So, you know, a lot of ways Keisha informed and kind of, allowed us to think outside of the box on, on, on this activation. <laughs> I, I was just talking to my roommate earlier if I should include this one, but I think that this is another great example of a, you know, quick and dirty rendering to get a point across to a builder. You can look on the left there. I almost wanted to cover it up, but that horribly Photoshopped perspective of that shelf, um, you know, didn't hold me back from putting that in and kind of showing my my vision of this of this um, environmental design and I think one of the things that is really hard to explain without an image and Keyshot really helped me uh, visualize was this gradient so Izzy at the time when I was working on this brand was really um, perpetuating this kind of two toned gradient effect. And when I was trying to explain it to the builder, uh, it was really hard to explain you know, how I wanted that gradient to interact with the central column, how I wanted the sweeping curve to feel really smooth and matte. Um, and I used a, uh, 
a texture map and I, I set it to camera. So I was able to really get it to seamlessly kind of interact with those very complex uh, curves in the specific rendering. So again, not worried about having multiple views of this and making sure that that texture was perfect, but really using the features within Keyshot to get, get the job done for that one image that I needed. And you can see in reality how that kind of really helped inform the builder to get as close to my, my sketch as possible. So you can see in reality, the Photoshopped skewed kind of shelf was a little bit more um, accurate in real life. But uh, this was a really great example of how Keyshot helped me get to this end result very quickly. Um, Sampling is a huge part of what we design at PepsiCo because a lot of our beverages, um, you know, yes, we want to be at these events and yes, we want to have the kind of equity of the brand grow in a really positive way. But at the, at the kind of core principle of everything that we do is, you know, driving trial and sampling of the products. Um, that we're, we're selling. So Keyshot really helps me uh, also visualize these kind of sampling experiences. Um, and again, like using the program to, to make really quick mock-ups uh, that, that I can kind of accentuate in Photoshop after. So I am not trying to render however many life water bottles were in this image. Um, you know, I, I used the lighting and set up all the shelves and made sure it was all dimensionally accurate. And then I went in and Photoshop and added in a lot of the, the artwork over top of this just to make sure that, you know, if, if something changed or if something was, um, you know, edited in a round of review, I didn't have to go back into Keyshot and set up all of the stuff. I had the template there that I could go into Photoshop in and work around for, for kind of revisions and edits. And you know, again, it goes it it goes onto that spectrum. So this one is a little bit more considered. I actually, you know, went online and I got these the exact chairs that I wanted. I I you know put them into the space and really worked on adding materials to them, trying to make the lighting uh, similar to the backplate image that I was using. And um, you know, again, this is really a case by case basis on how far I will go. Um, to make the image in Keyshot versus using Photoshop afterwards. These images are, are really uh, a fun uh, happenstance. So when I, when I was working on this activation, this was a Cola House, um, which was a brand, experiences, a brand experience for elevated Cola um, mixology. I was working with an agency and they came up with the structure and, you know, we had gotten to the stage where all we had to do was really help them figure out materialization. Um, so quickly in Keyshot, I was able to work through, yes, we want exposed beams on the floor. We don't need to paint that. We want to use uh, a like rusted copper steel type aesthetic on the bar. Um, and just by happenstance after the event was done, the, the photos that were actually taken were almost identical to the, the uh, side view and, and kind of perspective view. So I just think that this is a super, um, you know, interesting case by case uh, kind of showcase of the power of Keyshot to, you know, inform the accuracy of a build out down to literally the camera angle that they shot the, um, the photos from. <laughs> And as you can see, you know, it really, it really helps us get to this elevated experiential design for our brands. Another thing that Keyshot really helped me with that, again, is something that, you know, my initial thought of how Keyshot is used a lot um, is really zoomed in on a specific object. So I did the inverse for this project. Uh, working on another Cola House activation, we were in a warehouse and I wanted to showcase um, the full footprint of the warehouse that was super huge. So I decided to make this kind of dollhouse rendering 
uh, to showcase our brand partners uh, where everything in the space was supposed to go. So this is showing where graphics are gonna go, where all the different little experiences within this larger event would go. And um, this was also before Keyshot introduced um, video textures on uh, animation. So, you know, if I could go back in time, um, I think that that would have helped a lot here, but I went into After Effects and I kind of did these, uh, these other little animations over top uh, of this miniature and it really, really was a fun little uh, project there. And again, you can see how the activation came to life very similar to um, the render. So then on the flip side, there is marketing. And a lot of times you would expect PepsiCo to have grand photo shoots and, and um, that's really not the case a lot of times at PepsiCo. Uh, we usually use renderings on a lot of our marketing materials. And recently I've been delving into using Keyshot for a lot of our PR releases. So I think that that's been pushing me to become better at Keyshot, but also is showing the kind of power of Keyshot and in turn, helped me realize how to democratize it across our teams. So this was one of the first renderings I ever did of a Pepsi can. And um, we used this for a UEFA Champions League um, special edition can that was in market in Europe. And you know, it was the first time that I convinced our internal team that, okay, we could do this in Keyshot. We can get to a rendering that feels um, fun and fresh and, you know, is convincing. Um, and that, this was really the jumping off point for me to kind of push myself to become better at doing this. Um, so this was kind of my second step. Uh, this was actually not done for the marketing materials, but out of a realization that I had about a photo shoot that they had done. So we had photoshopped this uh, sp the specific can on a black background. Um, and I, you know, it costs thousands of dollars to do this photo shoot. And I remember being in a meeting and saying, I could have done that in key shot. I you know, we could have saved all this money. So I, t I went back, I got the model of the, this slim can and the graphics from that team. And I went in and photoshopped, I mean, uh, rendered in key shot almost the exact image that was Photoshop. And of course there were slight differences, but when the team saw it, it really, it kind of clicked a light in their head that, you know, huh, maybe we can start doing this instead of uh, photo shoots in the future. Um, so that was kind of the next step in the story of how Keyshot has begun to kind of incorporate into marketing. So, Mountain Dew, like I said, I work on this brand a lot. And this was a, an example, the next slide was an example of the first time that I had used Keyshot to actually art direct an agency for a key visual of a brand. And this was a, another big step because um, usually in marketing when we have uh, a key visual, uh, we will do most of the CG out of, uh, kind of out of house. And in a lot of cases, we will lose creative control because the agency then has kind of the creative freedom to propose us ideas. And, you know, sometimes they, they get it on the head and then sometimes, you know, they just don't have the institutional knowledge that we have as an internal agency. So this was kind of uh, a great example of using Keyshot to help inform that. So this was a key visual for uh, Mountain Dew Ice. And as you can see, I, I'm not, you know, as adept at making these bottle renderings as an agency. However, I was able to really, really um, kind of showcase my vision of these Mountain Dew shards of ice with the lemons and limes intersecting that. And, you know, Keyshot was doing an amazing job at like really showcasing the refractions within the how I wanted the lemons to interact with the ice. And um, this was also 
uh, one of the first times that I had delved into the material graph editor. So, you know, the ice material that I spent a lot of time creating uh, was like multiple layers of a roughness maps and a bump map to give that kind of wavy um, uh, refractions from the inside, uh, really refining the uh, refraction index of the water material that I was using to make sure that it was like the clarity that I wanted uh, and the, the reflections that I wanted. Um, and, you know, for this, I used really simple geometry. I just used uh, cylinders uh, that I used, uh, I mapped, I texture mapped labels onto. Um, and you know, I didn't have, I don't have Cinema 4D. I use Rhino for a lot of a lot of my rendering. So, you know, I found a Shutterstock image of these like small chunks of ice. I was able to layer that in. Um, I layered in some smoke to you know make sure that. And this was before we had um, scattering media for the smoke. So again, I used to kind of Photoshop to to show my intent. And this was before, and now this is after. Um, the image that the agency took from my rendering and kind of made into reality. So as you can see, like they went into detail on that bottle. I mean, we literally went in like drop by drop and art directed like how that looked. But overall, the image was very much informed by my key shot rendering, which, you know, is a real step in the direction of kind of owning the internal mindset of these brands. So another example of a PR material that came out of the blue was Pepsi Rosé. So this was a really funny project. Uh, I have a little anecdote on it. Um, I did not uh, work on this project until the rendering and my boss came up to me at the end of the day, I think it was four o'clock and he said, Jacob, I need you to render a rosé bottle uh, by the end of the day and uh, we need it to look photo real. And I was like flabbergasted. I was like, uh, okay, I'm gonna figure out how to do it. Um, and this is a perfect example of like, we had this project and the vendor that was making it could not create the bottles in time to photo shoot it before they had to ship it out to market. And so I worked on this bottle feverishly and, you know, Keyshot made it so easy to make a photo reel wine bottle. Um, I just, you know, downloaded and bought a, a wine bottle CAD. I, modeled in the foil that I needed to. And this was actually the first time that I used a displacement map. So on that foil, I um, started to play around with how that new function worked. And, you know, I was really happy with the result on such a short notice. And it, it went off without a hitch. The, the impressions were incredible. Uh, my boss was super happy. And again, this is a, this is something that, you know, before Keyshot, I, would have had to say, you know, this is impossible to do. So again, this is a this is a good example of pushing yourself and kind of just jumping in head first. So this kind of brings me uh, close to the end of my presentation, but you know, cans are something that as a beverage company we render a lot of. And you know, I've been working on a 16 ounce can rendering that I had gotten into the groove of that, you know, no matter what flavor, no matter what color I needed, I could start to uh, create rendering super rapidly. Um, I set up all the lighting, I set up the environment, and I was able to kind of create a workflow for myself that I could pump out these renderings. Um, so I was able to do a lot of these projects that have cans because you know I set up the can once and I was able to just bring it into all of these different kind of experiences and I set up the models with animation so I could easily just click a button no matter what um, artwork was on it and I could render it out. Now that brings me kind of to rendering 101 which you know Originally, we did a lot of our renderings in Photoshop. So on the left-hand side, 
you can see the Photoshop template that a lot of our graphic designers in-house use. Um, and this is kind of set up so we can do our packaging design, drop it into Photoshop, and it renders a, you know, close to life photorealistic flat front view of the can. Now, I thought, how, how do I make this better? Like this rendering is not that good. Um, so I created this template for myself and then really thinking about it, I was like, anyone can do this. It's literally just dragging and dropping a texture into place. So I created this template and this is kind of a video of how I set it up, but just using a can model, I set up all the lighting because I know how to do the environments and stuff. I set up a label um, with a metallic material on that label uh, and it has a base color, a metal color and a bump. And then I set up an illustrator template that I create all of my graphics on that all I have to do is export as a PNG from illustrator. And it's always the same size down to like, you know, the pixel. And all I have to do is drag it from my finder window into the label panel and it, you can see it changes the graphic. Now I'm showing it just changing the color of the, um, design because you know all of these designs the only thing that's changing is the color but this this exact template has been used in many other ways so this is a rendering that actually i didn't render myself um my coworker did who's a graphic designer and she has never used cad in her entire life she had never opened key shots she does not know how to cad model and she was able to, using my template, just render out a flat PNG of the, um, of the, the Illumitech bottle here and utilize it in a Photoshop uh, key visual. Again, she uh, created this graphic for Maui Burst, uh, which is a Mountain Dew LTO flavor, and she was able to render this file without my help at all, um, utilizing uh, just a simple PDF document that I had sent her with, you know, how to render in Keyshot. So I think that I'd kind of challenge you guys um, to really figure out ways to also democratize rendering to uh, your coworkers, other designers that you know that may, may be afraid to even uh, use Keyshot or, or kind of render it at all. And I think through simple templatization, uh, we can really, really help do that. So, you know, as I move to using Keyshot myself, um, I've also really made it a goal of mine to help teach kind of the next wave of designers in my office uh, the product. And then, you know, as time goes by, they'll begin to be able to do more things and, and grow. But I think in a lot of ways, Keyshot is an incredible tool because of its expansive breadth of how the program is used. So with that, I will um, open it up for Q&A. Wow, that was wonderful, Jacob. Can you, can, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Well, uh, first, I want to thank you. I mean, that was such a, uh, I mentioned sort of the top of the presentation that this is going to be inspirational, and you definitely delivered on the inspiration. I mean, the scope of how you're using it and the breadth of kind of how you're using all the different tools is, is really great. And it's the kind of thing that we're really hoping to achieve, you know, with this whole program is to make people understand just how versatile uh, and impactful Keyshot can be. So, so thank you very much for that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, uh, you know, humbled by it. And I, I really think it's about conquering fears. Like you, you don't need to be kind of dissuaded by looking on uh, render, we render Weekly and seeing the incredible rendering some people are doing. You know, I think Keyshot, a lot of people forget that Keyshot really can help you achieve at any stage, whether it be a sketch or that kind of final render. So hopefully this kind of inspires the the masses to, to think a little bit differently. It's a fantastic point. So there's some, there's some great questions for you. So I'll start shooting them over your way. Um, <coughs> one gentleman's asking, um, 
and I think you kind of answered this actually as your presentation went through. I think you sort of asking it a little, little earlier on, but you're using a lot of pre-existing graphics and branding. Mm -hmm. uh, what what do you do for custom materials, and, and and how much do you involve yourself with the custom materials and key shot to really communicate your your individual ideas and concepts? Yeah, I mean it's really a case by case basis, and I think again it's it's about the the time that I have or even the, you know, the goal that I have set in my mind. So for Pepsi Rosé, for example, I spent a lot of time on that foil playing around with the material graph editor, you know, to make that foil, I went into, I got it, I went on Shutterstock, I found a foil, you know, I really looked at how the foil, like where it's crinkling on in photos of, of the, um, of photos of champagne online or, or rosé and I and then I jumped into the material graph editor and I spent some time using you know a combination of of like my classic ways of in on materials which is using roughness to kind of add that you know variation between a metallic shine and something that's been scratched up or, or touched by a human hand um, as well as you know, a lot of times I'll play in on the metal materialization uh, to figure out um, exactly the type of metallic finish that I want. Uh, I think this this ice is a great example. You know, I spent a very long time uh, trying to make ice without being able to model the kind of organic nature of the ice because you know i'm jealous all the time of people who use cinema 4d i just never learned how to do that as an industrial designer i've always been you know hard-bodied plastics metals and and that kind of designer so when it comes to this kind of stuff i spent a lot of time in key shop trying to figure out ways to make this ice look organic even though i couldn't model it that way so you know I think it's really a trial and error. There was, I, I went on to key shot forums and looked for how people do ice and all of that stuff. But at a certain point, sometimes it's either not there or, you know, you have to kind of go on it on your own. And I think being, again, that like conquering your fears, jumping into the material graph editor, playing around with like layers upon layers upon layers of, you know, labels and textures and bump maps and how many can I do? Can I do more? Should I do multiple passes? You know, that's really where it, it begins. And, you know, I've done a couple workshops with, uh, had Keyshot come in and give a couple workshops. And one thing that I learned is that lighting has a huge part into play into how the material comes to life. So a lot of times I'll have to adjust either the material to reflect better in the lighting or the lighting to reflect better in the material. And I think that that's a good example in um, the game fuel cans, which, you know, depending on the color of the can, um, there's some game fuel cans that have a white white in a color versus black in a color. And in a lot of cases, I'm working in the material side on the metallic paint to really figure out like, okay, what's the flakes amount that I need? What's the clear coat finish? Should it be a little bit rougher? Should it be a little bit um, smoother? So, you know, I hope that answers some of the question, but I think it's really about t just not being afraid to tweak and play and pull that slider and, and you know, make mistakes and try again. That's Yeah, that's wonderful. And I'll, I'll give us a quick plug here. On Thursday, Materials Essential Workshop with Ryan Levy is at noon. So people who want to dig into Material Essentials and like Jacob was saying, for those who want to learn more about the material graph uh, on Monday, our Materials Advanced session is happening. So uh, if, you're, if you're inspired here and want to learn more about that, I recommend going uh, to those sessions. Um, another question is, um, someone's asking, you work a lot in Rhino, do you work with UVs uh, in, in KeyShot? Have you used the, the, um, the, the uh, UV Unwrap tool at all in KeyShot 9? So, unfortunately, I do not work with the UV maps that often. Actually, my roommate was, was talking to me about um, UV maps the other day and we were kind of playing around with that and I did see the UV unwrap feature it's always been something that I've been super interested in um, I think the potential for elevating how the textures wrap and how they kind of fit into this kind of 
that templatized way that I'm kind of looking towards. I think it could unlock the next step of that for more complex models than just a cylinder. So it is definitely something that I'm looking into. Um, I, yeah, I just, I have not used it. And I think shame on me for not having learned it yet, but. Um, <laughs> It, it, it just came out in 9.1, so you're okay. You aren't alone. But there's a great uh, feature tutorial on our website if you want to learn more. Uh, John asked a question. I want to thank John for asking this question because it's a wonderful question. Uh, have you used the new Keyshot Cloud Library at all for any models in anything you've done? So, you know, I personally have not delved into that yet. I have my um, kind of sources and means of getting CAD models. We, at PepsiCo, you know, we compile a lot of stuff when we're doing internal sketches. So if I get download a chair here, we kind of create uh, libraries that um, other designers, because I'm not by no means the only designer, um, you know, modeling events and modeling uh, these types of things. Also, you know, in a lot of cases, I'm, u I'm either rendering products that already exist within our libraries. So this 16 ounce can, you know, our internal industrial design teams model a lot of that and give it to us. But it's definitely something that I was super excited about because you, there's never enough places to find uh, CAD models to use. So I have not delved into that, but I think that it's a good plug for that feature. I love it. Awesome. Uh, someone's asking, and I think this is actually a, a term used more to the marketing side. He's asking what activations means. Can you speak just briefly about what an activation yeah. is? Yeah. So that was something that actually I, you know, a lot of times when we're at PepsiCo, we have either phrases or acronyms that we use. So I said PBNA, I kind of caught myself there. But we consider activations, um, events. So when a brand comes to life in a 3D space, so like the Tostitos activation, um, this is when we might have our marketing partners come to us and say, hey, we want to show up at Super Bowl. We have a 30 foot by 30 foot space and there's people coming to the space to sample the product. They want to see a talk back of like, we have celebrities coming that are going to be doing a panel. You know, like that is what we consider an activation um, and an experience that we create. Great. And so for those models, people are asking, uh, are you usually, usually using SketchUp to build those out? What are you usually doing to, to build out? So those I use Rhino, but uh, the person that I was working with for Tostitos Cantina, they, uh, a lot of designers here that uh, have started in experiential design, they use uh, SketchUp or more architectural modeling programs. Um, so in this case, uh, SketchUp was kind of a base that I CAD modeled, you know, certain things and, and, and gave it over in like an OBJ format or something that we could all, you know, we all export our files into similar formats and then we kind of compile them in Keyshot or compile them in a, a program and then put it into Keyshot. Um, but I'm not a huge SketchUp person. I, I kind of watch people use it and I think that there are certain things it does great, but you know, for me, I'm a lot more of like a rough and tumble kind of modeler when it comes to uh, activations and events. So I like the down and dirty Rhino that I can not worry about, you know, just duplicating and pulling and dragging and fillets are exploding everywhere, but I don't care because I'm just going to delete them. And, you know, it's not for production. Um, that's kind of, the way that I had model nowadays. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, what one uh, user is asking, are the color spaces you work in between Photoshop and Keyshot, they're using Pro RGB for still imaging, but many 3D tools are limited to sRGB uh, and don't really have kind of color, color management um, uh, mm. tools or um, uh, um, sort of templates. Uh, what, do, do you have a working color space at Pepsi? that you guys adhere to? Um, you know, another thing that I think, you know, is you would think that that we do, but we really, it's a little bit more of a wild west when it comes to to that. There, there are specific elements of like, uh, you know, 
when it needs to be color accurate, we have different methods of doing it. In a lot of these cases, this is similar to how we would do sketches, you know, for internal reviews. Like th this image is that you're seeing on the screen right now, like these would never go to consumer facing. Um, so, you know, in a lot of cases here, I'm utilizing uh, either what's native to my computer or what's native to whoever's computer was, was using it before me. Um, one thing that we do, you know, consider when we're, when we're talking about color, uh, I do use the Pantone swatches in Keyshot a lot to kind of become color accurate if I'm going to be using a material. But in a lot of cases, I'm exporting materials from uh, Illustrator and Illustrator has been set up by my IT to be, you know, in a specific color space um, when they set that up. So, you know, I think that that's more, one of those more technical questions that I might be if I was in more of a production role, but in kind of the designer role, it's not something that is necessarily super important to the workflow. Uh, great. Well, we're, we're kind of at the top of the hour here. So I'll ask you one last question uh, and it'll be a good one. What new feature in Keyshot 9 do you feel like has improved your workflow the most at Pepsi? So, I think the new feature that that best encapsulates the time of the year that it is right now is denoise. So, you know, since I've been relegated to working from home, um, that feature has helped me a lot because we're actually at PepsiCo set up with a network renderer. Um, and in a lot of cases, I'm rendering my files super huge at resolutions that you would you know your jaw would drop because we have so many cores allocated to rendering that it's it's rendering those images in two seconds when i worked when i had gotten moved to working from home um i was actually given a project where i had to render i think like 30 cans or 30 you know images and when i looked at my settings and tried to render it uh, natively on my computer, it was taking like three hours a can. I ended up like really thinking like, huh, I wonder if this new denoise function could help. And I think I did it with two samples and it took less than like five seconds to render and the quality was almost identical. So I think one, it's a lesson that you don't always need to pump up the samples to get a good rendering, which I know, but I like to pump it up anyways. Um, and then on top of that, Explore denoise a little bit because I think that it's a, a new feature that hasn't even scratched the surface of what it will help you do. Awesome. Well, thank you. One of the questions people has kind of how you learn uh, and kind of how you got up to speed on Keyshot. And obviously, you sort of talked a lot about sort of just trial and error. But I'd recommend for folks, you know, again, go uh, go to our agenda, see all the things that are coming out there. Go to our YouTube page. We're really going to be answering a lot of these questions you have about about lighting, about model sets, about animation, uh, all this, you know, we're, we're really gonna, we've got a lot of stuff packed in uh, to these next couple of days here going all the way through April 2nd. Um, and so, yeah, I think if you kind of uh, stick with us on our daily sessions, you're gonna learn uh, quite a bit about Keyshot and who knows, maybe you'll be uh, as good as Jacob is someday. Uh, with that, Jacob, I'm gonna grab the screen real, uh, real quick from you if I can to do our giveaway. Um, yep. One of the things that you were mentioning um, was uh, needing render power uh, while you're uh, home. And that comes in handy because today's giveaway is a one week 64 core rental from the fine folks at 3D Off The Page. So if you're looking for some extra horsepower, the folks at 3D Off The Page are here to help. Uh, it's a fantastic, uh, uh, I almost said fantabulous. <laughs> it's a fantastic render farm, I highly recommend it. Um, and the winner today is John Quinn, John Quinn from Disney, uh, you have won a one week 64 core rental from the wonderful people at Three Off The Page. So we will follow up with you directly uh, over email and connect you with uh, the folks over there. Um, so with that, that kind of wraps up our session. Jacob, I wanna uh, again give you a sincere thank you. It was just a wonderful presentation. Uh, I know I learned a lot, some great visuals, some great um, um, inspiration there. Um, and thank you for coming today. No, thank you guys for inviting little old me to give a little presentation and um, super excited. I think everyone should watch out for these next presenters because they're going to blow it out of the water. So, Well, thank Thanks you so lot. much. Well, reminder to join us again tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. and noon Pacific for two more sessions, Building and Managing Your Digital Twin with Brad Edelman and Tim Fair. They are at Keyshot Studios at the 10. 
And then at noon, Animation Essentials from Part to Material with Will Gibbons. Uh, so those are definitely not to be missed. Um, next, uh, those will be tomorrow. So thank you again, everyone. And until tomorrow, have a great night. Mm -hmm.